I always start every talk by saying my name is Rafiq Ziyada. I'm a refugee from occupied Palestine, soon to be free Palestine. I was told to talk to you today about the boycott, divestment, and sanctions movement and why it's necessary on our campuses. But I want to start on a note of solidarity to those on strike in Greece today, as well as those occupying squares in various countries around the world, as well as the strike that will take place here on November 30th. And the reason I want to start with this is because fundamentally, the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions campaign is about demanding justice, freedom, and equality, and, that, and a deep belief that it's us ordinary people around the world that will bring about this change. And indeed, it's our moral obligation to take the steps to bring about a just, more just world, not simply based on corporate profit, but social and economic justice. It is very inspiring to see all of you here today. For anyone who thought that the Palestine Solidarity Movement was dead on campuses, I wish they could see how beautiful this room is looking today. It's also very inspiring that for once, there's movements around the world, a global intifada, that is being inspired by the Arab Spring. For decades, we Arabs were told that somehow we genetically were modified not to work with democracy, and that the only way democracy could be brought to us was through military intervention. But today, I am very proud that for once, we are exporting democracy and legitimate anger to the rest of the world. Just to give you a small example, our region of the world has been the high, one of the highest recipients of US military equipment. Even though in countries like Egypt, 40 million people are living on less than $2 a day, there was a deal between the Saudi Arabian government and the US government for $60 billion worth of hardware. $60 billion worth of hardware to our region. And Egypt, a country again of 40 million people living on less than $2 a day, was the second recipient of US aid, only second to Israel. This just goes to show us that our region is vital and ending Israeli apartheid is a necessity for all of us. Not just because of what's happening in Palestine, but also because of what types of universities we want to have here. Where we want to say that education is a right, it's not a privilege that needs to be given at the tune of 9,000 pounds that our universities need to not be complicit in, with other corporations that are violating international law and human rights on a daily basis. So this is not just about Palestine, it's about all of the movements here and now and all of the work we are doing. For the past several decades, the Israeli government has continuously violated United Nations resolutions and international humanitarian law. In the creation of Israel in 1948, 75% of the Palestinian people were dispossessed and sent into exile. Then in 1967, Israel illegally occupied Palestinian territories in the West Bank and Gaza, creating a new wave of refugees. Palestinians who remained in Israel live as second and third class citizens, facing legal, economic, and social discrimination. In the occupied territories, Israel continues to sub subject the Palestinians there to home demolitions, closures, and checkpoints, extrajudicial detentions and assassinations, immobilizing curfews, and countless other daily abuses and oppression. This is not to even begin to speak of the brutal siege of the Gaza Strip. Since the so-called international community seems to be oblivious to the conditions that we Palestinians are living in, conditions that the most imaginative of science fiction writers couldn't have predicted, the only option left is to make Israel a pariah state for its crimes until it feels the necessity to comply with international law. Boycotts, divestments, and sanctions are a legitimate tool in this strategy. They help to educate about Israeli crimes against Palestinians, and more importantly, they move people beyond basic condemnations and silent indignation to actual effective action. The purpose of BDS is to force the Israeli state to fulfill basic principles of human rights and hold institutions that support Israel accountable. Governments around the world have clearly failed to do so, and in contrast, are instrumental in supporting Israel's system of oppression. 
The BDS campaign message is direct. It simply says that we should have no part in supporting those who stand with and maintain Israeli apartheid. We refuse to participate with and strengthen those structures and demand that basic rights are achieved for all in the region. The 2005 BDS call acted to link all sectors of the Palestinian people. Rather than just focusing on those living in the West Bank and Gaza Strip, it also connected activists on a global level within a single movement. The unified call for boycotts, divestments, and sanctions came from Palestine in 2005 and was signed by over 170 Palestinian civil society organizations. The call is the most authoritative and widely supported strategic statement to have emerged from Palestine in decades. All political factions, labor, student and women's organizations, and refugee camps across the Arab world support the call. The Unified Call has three basic demands, all enshrined in international law. One, ending Israel's occupation and colonization of all Arab lands and dismantling the apartheid wall. Two, recognizing the fundamental rights of the Arab Palestinian citizens of Israel to full equality. And three, and arguably the most important, protecting, respecting, and promoting the rights of Palestinian refugees to return to their homes and properties as stipulated in UN Resolution 194. That would mean, for those who still want to misrepresent this, that someone like me, whose grandparents come from Haifa, has every right to return to Haifa and one day will. The goals of the BDS campaign are also very clear. To expose the nature, the true nature of Israel's occupation and apartheid practices. To actually give real value to human rights by making Israel accountable for its crimes. To reveal and highlight the complicity of the international community in supporting Israeli crimes that relentlessly violate human rights and international law. And to end international support for the Israeli occupation and apartheid with the understanding that apartheid cannot be sustained without external assistance. And the BDS campaign is working. What other international initiative over the last few decades has so publicly expressed global dissatisfaction with Israeli policies and has been so effective in forcing the Israeli government to actually respond? We know that we are having an effect when the Israeli state has to set up a special, a special committee to combat BDS and when, when they are passing laws to silence our movement. But we are fed up with the empty rhetoric and cheap condemnations of the violence on both sides. There is a root cause to the violence, and the root cause is the settler colonial state of Israel that we must hold accountable. Now, we hear a lot that the only thing we should be doing is dialogue and building bridges. This is one of the campaigns on campuses nowadays, is build dialogue, build bridges, not boycotts. And this is the often repeated argument, not to talk about victim and victimizer. This argument of balance is willfully blind and deliberately confusing to the central political issues at hand. There is an underlying cause of the ongoing misery, and that is the apartheid state of Israel. The reality is that over decades of negotiations, Israel has simply cemented its stranglehold over the Palestinian people. Following the 1993 Oslo Accords, Israel's settlement construction in the West Bank actually doubled. And for those who want to build bridges, I just want to say two things. There are actually two bridges, one's connecting Jordan to the West Bank. Just allow the refugees to use these bridges and go back home. Those are good bridges to be using. What next for our work on campuses? In the two minutes I have, I will go over it very quickly, very importantly. We need to continue doing the groundwork and the educational work that we have been doing. This meeting today was the first step to coordinate the various Palestine societies and we will continue in doing this work. Today, a very important call came from Palestine about collaboration between European Union universities and Israeli universities and corporations that are complicit uh, with Israeli human rights violations and violations against international law. We will be speaking very specifically about this call a little bit later, announcing what it means and where it has, and where it has come from. And finally, last year, Israeli Apartheid Week was held in 100 cities around the world. Here in the UK, uh, there was an Israeli foreign ministry appeal where they send a bus 
touring around to say that Israel is not an apartheid state. So as the students organizing in this campaign and wanting to build BDS across the UK, we have one message for them, rent more buses this year, because there's going to be a lot more Israeli apartheid weeks taking place across the UK. Thank you all.